Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Holy Bro Kakute Teco ESC Combo and this is also the version that has come with the Atlatl VTX as well which I've already reviewed so I will link that in the below but it seems like a pretty nice stack so we have got 32-bit BL Halley ESCs that are capable of running D Shot 1200 and it's all set up with ESC telemetry. Interestingly, it's not using pins to connect the two levels together, it's using this connector here, which is absolutely fine. Now, there's no manual here, so you have to go on the website and look at the individual manuals because these are individual components that they've sort of bundled together here and I think it's a really nice price at the making of this video it's costing around about 65 pounds and that is all of this here and I think it is a nice set of guts to your copter so the ESCs are capable of 30 amp continuous and a 50 amp burst the entire system takes from a 4 to 6s battery so it's very versatile we've got a f4 flight controller here it's the kakute v2 and it's got loads of spare uarts in fact it's got six uarts but what i want to do in a bit is take you onto the computer and look at the manual because I think if you were looking at this for your build there are some things to take into consideration and I can't really show you that just looking at all these little tiny pins so I'll take you over to the computer in a moment. One thing I do like about this though is check out all of these little tiny capacitors here and this is one thing that they are advertising about this system is that you do not need to add any further capacitor they have added all of these here so you shouldn't get any issues with voltage spikes or noise so I actually really like that just look at all these little individual current sensors on these 32-bit ESCs as well now you're not given an XT60 or any wire so you would have to source that yourself and then we have got the isolated IMU here, it's an F4 and again this is why I want to take you over to the computer because with an F4 you have certain UARTs inverted and some not and I want to talk about that when it comes to your build but in general I think it's a really capable system and again you know paired with this VTX the Atlatl now when I reviewed this guy it did have a little bit of noise I think it does depend on the system you connect it to though but yeah it had a little bit of noise on the higher output so this will output up to 600 milliwatt I found when it ran on 25 milliwatt there wasn't any noise whatsoever in fact it's the same system that is in the Holy Bro copy so the RTF and I really liked that model so yeah it's a pretty nice system let's see what we get so it actually came built like this already and as I say you can get the parts individually as well so if you want to use a different VTX you don't have to get this one one thing I do like about the Atlatl though is that it uses this MMCX connector it's really hefty and I don't like those little micro UFL connectors I've broken so many we've got some more standoffs there we've got some sticky tape we've got a warning thing to say don't power up your VTX without an antenna connected but that's sort of like a given we've got a heat sink there for going over the RF shield on here we've got a connector on there and then we've got some SMA screws for attaching this to your copter as well okay so this is the manual for the Kakute F4 V2 now I know it's not the most exciting thing to be looking at a manual however I can read the labels much easier than I can on the actual circuit board they are written on the circuit board but they are tiny and they are difficult to read so the first thing that I want to point out is that this flight controller only supports serial based receivers such as SBUS, IBUS, DSM2, DSMX it is not going to support 
PPM or PWM. So that might be important straight away because I know some people still using PPM and also PWM as well. You would solder your receiver on this one here, R3. The 3 stands for UART3. And if we look over here, UART3 has automatic inversion. So this is a problem with F4s. Not every UART has automatic inversion. So you'd be fine using any of the receivers on here. Of course, they have to be serial based because it's got automatic inversion. But can you see this label here, S port? there that's what SP stands for or smart port so if you are using a RXSR for example and want the telemetry going back to the Tyrannus or your transmitter then you would hook this up but I've noticed an issue can you see it says UART1 so it would be on the UART1 but it's inverted now the original RXSR and some of the early FreeSky receivers for example were inverted However, the latest RXSR is actually uninverted. There's a solder pad on there and you can switch it between inverted and uninverted, but out of the box mine came uninverted. So if you were to hook that up to here, it wouldn't work. And in fact, if we take a look in beta flight, let me just connect to it there. If we go into the ports, everything's set up already. You'll see UART1, they have set up for smart port. And again, if you were using a RXSR that was new, this wouldn't work and you'd have to sort out the inversion. So you would perhaps maybe you know, switch the solder pad or use one of these other spare UARTs down here that are uninverted. So your other UARTs are here. So R4, that's UART4, so your TX and your RX and then also your UART6 here as well. You're probably wondering where is UART5 and UART5 is pretty much dedicated to the ESC telemetry and it's on the second pin over here on this connection. In fact if we come down here you can see it says R5, that's UART5 for ESC telemetry. In fact I think you can access it on a pad so you can see this RX1 here UART5 as well. Uh, where is that? RX UART5 but it says it's uninverted for ESC telemetry so I guess you could tap into that and use it for something else but yeah it is uh, dedicated there for your ESC telemetry which I think is interesting on this one because if you have a look it says here on pin 4 which is also connected current sensor input now I thought that the current sensor would come through the ESC telemetry you know earlier when you saw those four current sensors I thought that fed through on here however the way they've got it set up out of the box if we look in the power and battery it's set to onboard ADC so I just wonder if that current sensor is just going to read the same thing whether you select ESC or ADC there but it's definitely something to watch out for when you are building this thing because both are connected there but yes if we go into the uh, configuration it does have ESC sensor enabled interestingly not anti-gravity or dynamic filters but of course you know this is really DIY stuff you'd be setting it up yourself there but if we look at the on-screen display they haven't turned on any of the ESC sensors like the temperature or the RPM so you'd have to go and do that again I guess they're just giving you the tools to do so and then they've just given like a basic setup here with your current and your voltage etc so yeah let's go back to the manual so one thing as well is you don't get a buzzer with this system but you can add one so if you look down here we've got a 5 volt down here and then a buzzer on the minus you could slot your buzzer directly into there so this is a feed through it's not a solder pad so you could solder it direct of course you have to make sure that it doesn't get in the way of this isolated IMU here you don't want it touching that really but yeah we've got the individual motor PWM pads here as well if you don't want to go through this route and if you weren't using this connector as well you could power the thing up 
by the v bat here so we've got the b there of course i'm going to be using this to power up the atlatl vtx so that requires at least seven volts to power up so you'd be using the v bat which is why i think you get a little bit of noise through it there but you couldn't power it off the five volt because that wouldn't be enough but if you wanted to use a unify for example you could use that to power that up and then we've got our video in and out there for your on-screen display and then we've got a couple of grounds down here as well. I wish those were closer to here, but yeah, it's not a big thing there really. And that's pretty much all you need to know on there, I would say. We've got a boot button, which is nice and convenient. We've got the direction on there as well. There is actually a 3 volt, you can see there. It says uh, 200 milliamp max. And then the back on the 5 volts quite strong, 1.5 amps. So, you know, that would be fine for using a run cam split. In fact, what I thought was interesting is you look on here on the UR4, they've got run cam device, which I think they did design to use with a split. Of course, you can do camera controls when that is released. And we talked about ESC sensor, but yeah, it's set up there. And on the UART 6, they've got Tramp as well. So, yeah, lots of UARTs, but yeah, you need to be mindful if you're wanting to use SmartPort. And, you know, when it, it comes to sort of like the inversion of things, it can be quite tricky. So, let's have a look what version of Betaflight Flight it's come with while I'm here. So, 3.22, I would say uh, November 2017. It's a fairly old version, and the target is the Kakute F4 V2. So, if we go back to the manual, I think that's pretty much it. You know, just watch out for all of these things with sort of like the inversion and stuff. And, you know, you sort of your connections here as well. But I think in general, I think it's a really nice flight controller, nice package when it comes to the 4m1 esc there's really not a lot to talk about there because it's just on this connector here so you know it's designed to connect up directly there but yeah i think i like it i think it's a good system so that is my overview of this stack i'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one the price seems to be pretty nice and if you found this video useful i'll put a link to my patreon in the below and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers